clean the oil off of it. And if you wondered what kind of oil I use, um, I use uh, quench oil. It's uh, Chevron 70, I think it is. See, it's got a little gray specks on it. That's what you're looking for. Little boat. <laughs> the woods boat. <laughs> you need a boat in the woods? There it is right there. All right, I'm gonna put it in the oven. Okay, we got it back from the out of the oven. Been there 90 minutes. That was yesterday. <laughs> uh, I have uh, some things to do with the bank and all kinds of stuff. Finishing up the shop. Just evening, so I got back on it this morning. But I got an early day today because I got got a dental appointment. I broke a tooth last night. I tell you what's always something. But anyway. We're going to polish this up and we're going to put a handle on it and uh, let's see if we can't finish it up first thing this morning and uh, before I have to go to the dental thing. Stay with me. Get on the grinder, do a little polishing, and uh, I'll show you a little bit of that. All right, there it is. It's set for uh, about a couple of hours. It's still soft. It'll take that epoxy a good 12 hours to cure, but it's it's to where we can work with it a little bit. So uh, I'm gonna take uh, take it off and and uh, see if I can't start a sheath with it anyway. Okay, don't that look very similar? <laughs> very similar to the to the little drawing I did. Okay, um, it's, uh, it's got that little point there, so you can protect the point and, and get in there and do that. Um, the, this handle here, I may square that off. I want to use it for a little while and make sure that this handle is not going to get in the way of this, this curve here. But, um, and I may, I may eventually cut this tip off as well, shorten the handle up a bit. But um, I think that, that is going to be a very, very useful design, especially trappers and, and fur barriers and things like that. Uh, even whitetail. I mean, if you want to do a cape, uh, cape whitetail and things like that, I think that this, this knife here, this design, is, is very, it would be very useful. Uh, so anyway, we're going to take it into the leather room now, and we're going to see if we can't do a sheath for it. Stick with me. Okay, uh, this one uh, got the epoxy still curing on it, so um, I'm not going to use it very, very harshly. We're going to do all the cutting with this, this old one. Hear that ring? That right there lets you know that there is a good temper on that blade. So if you have a knife or an axe or anything that rings like that, it uh, shows that it has a good temper. Um, I want to, uh, to do a welt for this knife. And I want the welt to come up way past this tip, and I want the, the tip to kind of come back in. It, it's going to be very tight in there, but let's see if I can't do that. I want the blade to kind of sit down in the, in the sheath a little bit. We're going to do a neck knife. 
because I think that this is going to make a very good little neck tool. Um, and uh, here we go. Let's see if we got a little marker here that'll work. Trying to think abstract when you're doing these unusual sheets is kind of difficult sometimes, but but when you try to you try to compensate for all the problems that you think is going to happen, and see if see if you can't get it at least most of the bases covered. Leave enough there to sew. Yeah, I found to use this is like this. When you're using ulus and things like that, you have to kind of rethink your your grips. Because remember, we're talking Stone Age stuff. deal to be come up to the handle there maybe a little bit higher up there so they can put a snap there I think that would be easier than what I've got designed now Okay, I've got it cut out to where I think I, I can I can do that and have a little snap there in the in the middle right there to hold it in place. So now I want to uh, to do this this top part on there, glue it up and let it sit there and cure for a bit. Get the glue to kind of I scraped the the leather to get the sheen off of it a bit. Glue seems to hold better that way. Okay, let that cure up. I think it's cured enough. Just kind of use my thumb and feel where that uh, welt goes. Might get one stitch in there. Pretty tight right in there. Free-handed. Okay, since I don't have a stitching machine, I'm going to take it over to the drill press and I'm going to, with about a sixteenth inch bit, drill a hole in it.
Take it into the sander and uh, work on it a little bit. Okay. So she. Should have brought that down a little bit, but it's been kind of difficult to get in there. Alright, it'll do until something better comes along. May just oil this, put a little color on it maybe. Um, but it it works. I like the way that snap is. They're just I haven't figured out a good way to do that snap yet, but I'll think on it some more. May redo the sheet. We'll see. But anyway, there it is. All right. After playing with the Ulu for a little bit uh, yesterday, um, I decided to make some changes and actually make a new sheath for it because I never did like the way that sheath worked. So I made a different sheath. Um, same concept, just fits a little tighter. Uh, I actually, it's it's drawn from from the the left side instead of the right side i thought maybe because grabbing it with my right hand may be easier to to take it out of the the sheet and uh, it's i mean it's not a quick action but hey it uh it gets the job done it it, it fits a little tighter right now it's fitting real tight but hey i like tight rather than loose as far as uh, losing the knife but anyway so that's that's it um, I'm really really think that that's gonna work okay so the changes I made to the um, to the Ulu is I, I, I changed the handle I shortened the handle and rounded the top a little bit um, I actually cut the tip off a little bit, but the main thing is I sharpen this edge here so you, you can actually get under that skin and pretend it's, uh, this is this is the skin of the animal. You can get under the skin and 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 cut it just like so. And this is real thick leather, but you kind of get the idea. You see, <laughs> um, and it also finds it gets that point a little bit finer. So when you're cutting leather, so when you're slicing leather or anything like that, it's just it's just effortless. I mean, so. Um, to show you how close we came, or I came to, to the actual original design, that is the design we started with, or I started with. So I got pretty close to it, all right? So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope uh, that uh, you got some ideas on your own tools and, and your own way of doing things. Uh, the Ulu is a underrated tool in my opinion um, it does have us have its place and um, I think that that um, it's just a fantastic tool if you learn how to use it and if you watch uh, a lot of the um, the Alaskan indigenous peoples uh, they claim it's a woman's knife but you you see a lot of men using them as well um, because it's such a useful tool uh, and if, if you use it enough and learn how to use the tool, then it will replace a lot of your other tools. Uh, just, just watch them use it. It's, it's amazing to watch them how they use them, flaying fish and, and uh, butchering animals and, and kitchen work. and just I mean, it's just a, a fantastic design. And with this uh, prototype, I think that it's actually going to be improved as far as a skinning tool, uh, fleshing tool, skinning tool, 
Um, I, I think that that is, that is just, it's going to be a very useful thing is what I think. But time will tell. We will see. Um, so, till the next one. You guys get out in the woods, get in the backyard, whittle on a stick. Be sure and take a child with you if you get the opportunity. And uh, don't forget those band-aids and lots of knives. Get you a new one. We'll catch you again soon. Bye-bye.